just going to share my uh, slip screen so you can see it. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about uh, engaging and inclusive approaches uh, to encourage students in their writing. So I'll just make it full screen there. Um, I find that when we're encouraging students in their writing, we really want to make sure that firstly, they are excited and they want to really get involved when they're doing the activities, but also that we provide a route in for them because sometimes that can be a frustration as well. So a few key strategies that I'll put up on this slide then. Um, in role approaches, what I mean by that is students and actually potentially even teachers taking on board the role of a character when they're either doing their writing or when they're interacting with a member of staff too. I find that really exciting because I think the students find it quite fun. A teacher in role taking on board the role of a character, a scientist, a doctor, whoever it might be, and interacting with the students can be a really engaging way of getting the students emotionally invested in the work that they're doing so that they can write from the inside of that perspective. And I've often found that students, when they do this, really get engaged in those activities too. Um, linked to that is the uh, second one that I've got is uh, shared storytelling. So this can be done in several ways. You could go around the circle or go around the classroom and get a student to say one word each and then build up a story together. And that can create a really collaborative environment. Students can also use that to develop their understanding of sentence structure and sentence lengths too, which can be really interesting. Or as an alternative, you can actually do um, kind of a, like a shared modelling of it, where you get the students to give you different sentences and ideas and you together as a whole class can write up the whole story and I find that when you do that it can not only get um, that kind of engagement but also a really collaborative um, environment within the classroom which can be really interesting too. Um, sometimes if you want the students to get the inside of a perspective or an, a, an idea or an engagement, um, encouraging them to have a debate or a discussion initially before you do the writing can be a good way to make sure that they, you know, they have a perspective on something, they've thought about their opinion and they're ready to talk about it and share it. It seems simple, but actually making sure that they're emotionally invested within it can be a great way. And if they've practiced it first by orally rehearsing their ideas before they commit pen to paper, that can be a great way to it too. Um, Yumina was speaking earlier really interestingly about the value of language and that tier two vocabulary and keyword rankings I think can link into this too. So if you give students a range of different vocabulary that you're encouraging them to use within their writing um, you can do it on little post-its or maybe little cards that you can cut out and then encourage them to think about well which are the most sophisticated or impressive pieces of words or language that you want them to use and then get them all the way down to the ones they don't think are as impressive. Firstly what's wonderful about this is the there are no wrong answers necessarily. So it's very inclusive and encourages all students to have a perspective or an opinion, but also you can really challenge them too by including lots of different ambitious vocabulary and seek to get them to use them in their pieces of writing too. I found that students then, once they've been exposed to that higher quality vocabulary, those interesting words that we're encouraging them to use really do develop the quality of their writing. And I think it's really interesting too and engaging. Um, say what you see, <laughs> I'm not uh, just talking talking about the television show catchphrase there. Say what you see is a really nice one where you get students to have um, an image or something that um, one student can see in a pair and then on the other side, they can't see it. So you might hold, get them to hold it up in front of them. And then they have to describe what they can see in the picture while well, the other student on the other side writes about what the description is. What's really nice about this, apart from the obvious kind of competitive and collaborative nature of it is that it is quite um, focused and it really makes the student think about the quality of the speech that they're using and making sure that they're describing things in very clear detail. So if you're noticing that students in their descriptions can be a bit vague or a bit woolly, if you've given a very clear description, that can really help with it too. And I think that the say what you see uh, model so the kind of the idea of really engaging students with that can be about the focus and the precision. Um, words tennis um, is something that I absolutely love doing. And obviously, if we're being COVID safe, you have to be careful about how you do that within the classroom. What I really like about word tennis is it gets the students thinking about those associations and connections between words and language and meaning. So the way that I would do that if we were able to get students to get up and stand and face each other is I would give them a theme, a topic or an idea and encourage them to physically imagine that they're holding a tennis racket and back 
batting the ball across the classroom, but of course there's not a real ball. What they're batting across the classroom is different words and keep them going until they run out of words that they've thought of. This is so fun and engaging. My goodness, I've been shocked by how interested students are at actually doing the word tennis activity. But as well as that, what's really nice about it is it gives them lots of different ideas so that when they get to their writing afterwards, they've generated a whole host of different words and meanings, which I think is just completely wonderful. Um, and then the last one I wanted to share, many of us have mini whiteboards in their classrooms that can be really good for students if you're getting them to scribe their ideas. Um, I know that it's something that sometimes teaching assistants use too if they're writing for the students um, so that the students can copy what they see on the mini whiteboard too. But actually just before students do their writing, if they've got a textbook in front of them or an exercise book that they want to write in, they can try out their ideas firstly on the mini whiteboard. What I think is really good about that is it kind of removes that fear and the sense of intimidation they might get from committing pen to paper because if it goes wrong it's very easily scrubbed out so that it can continue working and um, so these are just seven strategies that I think could be helpful could be useful for um, students um, in really making sure that they feel engaged and included within their writing uh, thank you very much <laughs>